Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energized The Face Off. Ross, introduce the guests, man. Today we have two of Cage Warriors' best bantamweights, Josh Crazy Horse Reed and Luke Apocalypse Now Shanks. Lads, how you doing? All good, all good. Luke, yeah, what about yourself? Good, 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 thanks. Lads, before we get into the show, two of the best ba- names in Cage Warriors. Like, I, I just can't deny that. Yeah, that has to be said. It has to be said. Uh, the, these two boys are absolute veterans uh, of the game. Uh, Josh, what did you make of it when you found out you're going to be fighting Luke this time out? Um, I like the fight. I do. I know it's going to be exciting. Um, Luke comes to fight like myself. Um, I think the fans are going to be the winner of uh, the fight, and um, I think it's a fight that can get me to the you know where I need to be then with a win over Luke. And then, Luke, what about yourself? Uh, how did you feel about fighting Josh? And then also, this is up a bantamweight. Is this going to be your new home for the foreseeable future? Uh, we'll see, you know. But, yeah, no, likewise, I, I like the matchup. I did want the belt. I, I was wanting the, the belt shot, but I'm I'm in contract till December, so I'm not waiting around. And uh, Josh Reed is definitely one of the contenders now. So, yeah, I'm ready to go. That's what we were talking about uh, off air. We were thinking the winner of this is definitely like putting their name in the in the hat for a title shot next. We all know Dominique is the champ at the moment, and he's like whether or not he's going to be going on to the UFC or the Contender Series. But like, do you believe a win against each other can put your name in in the title contention next? Josh, you can go first. Yeah, hundred percent. I think the winner of this well should automatically fight for the title. Um, I think there's arguably we both could be fighting for it now. So uh, definitely after this fight, uh, the winner should fight for the belt, hundred percent. And Luke, yeah, man, I, I won't be expecting anything less anyway. Luke, do you view yourself as the flyweight champion as it stands after your last fight? Well, you, you know the score. It don't matter what you view yourself as, does it? But um. If I'd have done an IV like Sam, I would have been uh, still the champion there. But I don't know. Everything happens for a reason. And um, I, I want to be... I've been at Bantamweight a few times, so I'm, I'm happy to go back there anyway. No, it's, uh, I think um, either way, like this this is a fight for the fans. This is a really entertaining boatman. Bring it, boatman. Have uh, exciting styles. Um, Josh, just on the division, and we're speaking about the title... Do you foresee Dominique Wooden defending his belt again, or do you see him going off the UFC? Um, well, he chops in on Instagram, um, Twitter, or one of the socials, any all the time. So, um, and he's having a lot of uh, people backing him on this. So, he might get a shout on the contender. That's what he wants, I think, isn't it? Or, or UFC London. But no, um, I would. If I was him, I would have stayed active. I would have, and then the, the call would come straight away. But everyone's different, as you know. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what about uh, yourself, Luke? Do you think uh, Dominique gets that call? And um, I don't know. Would you like to actually get in there with him before he gets the call as well? Yeah, I just want to. Well, I don't care. He's got the belt, but because he's got a lot, a lot of hype around him, I wouldn't mind uh, taking him out. But it is what it is. Um, Fletcher done a good job on him, and then gassed out. He spent too much energy, but he's definitely got a lot of holes there, ground wise. Well, that's why Cage Warriors is one of the best platforms to be on to show your skills and get your name out there. And that's why we appreciate both of you coming on here to promote your fight at Cage Warriors 138 in Colchester on May 28th. There's also an event on May 27th. But this is the one we are talking about, Ross. Yeah, absolutely. I think this one should be the main event on the night. Um, it's definitely the people's main event, uh, to say the least. Uh, these are two absolute veterans of the Cage Warriors cage. And I'm very, very excited to see it. Uh, I'll play out. Josh, where do you think you have the advantages over Luke in this fight? Um, I think, well, anyway, really, I'm happy wherever the fight goes. Um, I don't concentrate on him on one area. I'm just happy wherever the fight will go. I think I'll be able to cope everywhere. Um, what about yourself, uh, Luke? Where do you feel like you hold the advantages? 
Uh, yeah, same. I, I'm I'm going for a knockout anyway. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I've got more power, but we'll see. We'll soon find out. Luke, obviously in your first Sam Creasy fight, um, there was the controversial unseen tap um, <laughs> in that fight. Would would that actually have a, any effect on referee people who are referee your fights going forward? Would you object if that referee was to uh, be refereeing your fight again? Well, yeah, the the best referee, Rich Mitchell, seen it because um, he he's at Graham Shim. He he works uh, as a, a coach, or maybe he just trains uh, under under Graham Shim these uh, MMA clinics. And Creasy was a coach there, so. Um, it's one of them ones. I couldn't get the referee I wanted. So, uh, yeah, but to, to be honest, I, I should have just snapped his arm. I know the guy. We trained together, and uh, it is what it is. But I, I, at the time, I was thinking, oh, well, I'll get you again. But then I uh, made a little mistake, and he, he, he got the better of me. So, um, yeah, live and learn, man. Too much of a nice guy, Luke. Do you agree, uh, Josh? I'm, you I'm over that guy? now. I'm over it. Uh, I've beat him again, so I'm over it. It's all good. <laughs> and Josh, do you see Luke as the flyweight champ moving up as well? I don't. Do you see Do you see Luke as the flyweight champion moving up the bantamweight? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, he was a champ. He's a champion at the weight below. Um, I just think um, I'm a, I'm a lot bigger than him, and um, I think on the night he will see that. Uh, and also, Josh, like, uh, how many people are you bringing down with you to Colchester? Um, I got a good few going down, considering the drive is uh, like four and a half, five hours for us, I think. But uh, yeah, I got a, I got a few going, and uh, we'll we'll have the fans going, no, no doubt. Anyway, after the foot, the soon as the bell rings, so uh, it doesn't matter. Will you be driving or will you be going by horse? <laughs> I'll have to try this time a bit far. <laughs> and what about oh. yourself, Luke? Will you be bringing many of the Apocalypse Army with you? Yeah, they're, they're pretty close because um, I'm from Northampton, although I'm in, in Scotland now. So, um, yeah, and my coach is his wedding on the, the 26th, so he'll be coming down separate. So, I've got some of my guys from Northampton. Uh, dropping down for the the weight cut, so I don't know how I'm getting down yet, but that's pretty. Yeah, I'll get to, down wait, anyway. <laughs> can't wait to witness the arena as well. It's, it's going to be off the rails, Ross. Yeah, oh no, it is definitely going to be on uh, on fire. It's going to be um, Wales versus Scotland slash Northampton. It's going to be uh, those those people know how to make the noise. Uh, it's going to be we a crazy over. apocalypse, Ross. <laughs> Absolutely. When we were over for. Um, UFC London, we were staying in the same hotel as a load of Welsh, and my God, that they, they were noisy, noisy so and sos. Uh, and yeah. we, we've been to a few events in Scotland as well, and uh, the Scots know how to bring the noise as well. So, um, you know, Graham Boland knew what he was doing when he was uh, making this fight happen. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Guys, the bar is going to be fully stocked as well. Absolutely, uh, the bar, the bar will be drunk dry. Um, <laughs> Josh. Obviously, I think this is your 16th or 17th fight in Cage Warriors. Where does Luke Shanks rank among those opponents? Uh, yeah, he's um, he's up the top, definitely in the in the top three. That's for definite. Um, obviously, I fought the likes of Nathaniel Wood, uh, Scott, his teammate. I fought. I don't. I don't fight any bums. It's as simple as that. So, um, I was happy when this fight came along. Um, he's a name, perfect for me. And then what about yourself, Luke? Obviously, um, Josh just named some of his top points there. You fought the likes of Sam Creasy, Jake Hadley. Um, where where does Josh uh, rank among your top opponents? Yes, same. Likewise, uh, we're not fighting any bums there. So, um, yeah, definitely up there. I mean, because it's uh, a weight class up, so some people say it might be harder, might, might be easier. I, I know I'm not going to be depleted going in there. Because uh, sometimes I felt pretty much dead going into these fights, so um, I'm I'm looking to perform 100 this time anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm gonna actually just ask you both about uh, two separate individuals in your gym as well. Um, Josh, what's the atmosphere like been since Jack picked up that win in UFC London? Yeah, um, the the gym has been as in for a while now, not just because of that fight. Um, mm. Obviously, we've got Brett Johns in the gym who's doing well. 
Um, we got Scotty Pettis in there. We got Oban, uh, myself. Um, yeah, the the team is uh, growing, and we got amateurs coming through, and the gym is buzzing now. is is a good place. We're in a good place. And yeah, then, Luke, sorry, Josh, Josh, just on your story on Instagram, it was funny. You, you called Oban like a shoe face. That was a very funny. <laughs> You're a bad then, dad, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Was, I just I was like, this guy's funny. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, Luke, you have um, a wild Irishman over in higher level by the name of Dylan Tuke. What's it like to have him in there? And uh, I'm sure he keeps the people entertained. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, he's the last year or so of him being there. It's frightening, man. So, um, Hopefully he'll be on the big shows very soon as well. But yeah, yeah he's always keeping us entertained, Dylan. Yeah, and what, about, maybe, what about maybe. Stevie McIntosh as well, Luke? How's he getting on? Yeah, he, he's been taking a little bit of time off. I think he got a, a house sorted similar to that. The guy at one, what's his name? The, the champ, yeah, yeah. He, I think he was doing the same stuff. He took took six months off to do his house or whatever, and they stripped him of the belt. But um, yeah, he's been doing that. So he'll be back to training and fighting soon, I think. But f- for now, he's he's been on a little break. Stevie Ray's been the main guy fighting on PFL. Uh, he's been the one pushing me, seeing his hard work. That's what we like to hear. We like to see, um, you know, each gym doing really, really well and pushing on European MMA. And that's that's where, where we're at. And that's why Cage Warriors is the pinnacle of uh, European MMA. Um, a question for both you guys. Obviously, come uh, Cage Warriors London, they're bringing over American talent, and it's going to be the first time we have a UK fighter fighting someone from America. Would you guys like to go the far side of the pond and fight in Cage Warriors US, or would you welcome the challenge of a US fighter coming over here, or does it make a difference to you guys? We'll start with Josh. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. It'd be a nice experience, obviously, to go over there and fight. Um, vice versa, them coming over here. Um, yeah. As long as they're high caliber, I'm up for fighting anyone. And what about yourself, Luke? Would you like? Would you see yourself, uh, you know, on, on the beach in uh, LA? <laughs> yeah, I did plan on it when it first started, but because of COVID, or they're trying to get a roster together over there, didn't really happen. And uh, I, I'm plan. I've got uh, my contract till December. I'm, I'm planning on getting the two fights out of the way and then uh, going on to bigger and better things before then. But if I'm still about, definitely. We love to hear it, Basma, don't we? Yeah, that's it. It's great having you both on. Uh, like, we really can't wait to see you perform in Colchester at Cage Warriors 138 on the on May 28th, live on UFC Fight Pass. Lads, before we wrap things up, is there anything you want to say to each other just in the build-up to the People's Main event? <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> no, I respect Josh. He's a real fighter and um, he's just a sound guy. So we're just going to do our talking in the cage, I think. Likewise. Yeah, Baz, I think uh, great respect shown here. Like, uh, I feel like these lads are going to give you would give each other a hug if they were uh, face-to-face. <laughs> I wish you a good look. But uh, one thing knows, when that first bell rings, there'll be no hugging it out. These guys are, are both coming yeah. for the finish and they're exciting fighters. We are looking forward to seeing it. Exactly. Ross, we're going to wrap things up there. If you are watching on UC Fight Pass, make sure to hit the star button in the top right for favourites. If you're watching YouTube, make sure to like, make sure to share, make sure to subscribe. And as always, stay, stay energized. energized. Energize, Shaw. Up the Irish. Been sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you're doing... Some interviews with Dylan Moran and that I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.